And if it's true that just under 44% uh, have confirmed via the form that they are still Christian, that still demonstrates, does it not, that religion is a powerful and potent force in Australia. But how does that force manifest itself, Dr Donnelly? You mentioned the book. uh, There are a number of chapters in there. And I often refer to the arrival of the First Fleet. Two of the books that came with the First Fleet are the King James Bible, as you know, and Blackstone's Laws of England. Now, the Bible underpins our political, our legal system, the New Testament. Uh, You only have to read the New Testament to understand concepts like the inherent dignity of the person. We're all made in God's image. Ideas about social justice, about committing to the common good, about uh, even the Ten Commandments, uh, morality, ethics, it all underpins our political and legal Mm. system. Mm. And that's why our parliaments begin with the Lord's Prayer Mm. and the preamble to the Constitution calls on Almighty God. Now, again, the left want to get rid of that, but history tells us it's there. Mm. And it always troubles me that we want to acknowledge Aboriginal culture and their elders, but we're cancelling our own heritage and our own tradition. Outstanding point. When Outstanding point. When people talk about the decline in religion, do you think they understand that this is not just about religion? It's not just about going to church or religious schools. There are hospitals underpinned by religion, aged care facilities, charities, social welfare organisations. Many of them enjoy tax exemption, but it's not valid or is it invalid to argue that without such Christian bodies, I'm thinking of St Vincent de Paul, St Vincent's hospitals, any number of aged care entities, Australia's social, health and educational fabric would collapse. It would collapse. And I've uh, read some reports where when you look at education, health, social welfare, up to 50% of that uh, those organisations are Christian, either managed or inspired. Definitely. And, you know, the old furphy, the teacher union always bangs on about uh, Catholic schools costing too much. But the reality is, as you well know, parents who send their children to yes. Catholic schools are paying for the government system Quite. as well as the Catholic My system. My word. They're saving the They're subsidising, subsidising the government. The government could never afford to educate all those people if you closed every one of those schools. Just coming back to a point you just made, which was made by the former Deputy Prime Minister, John Anderson, who splendidly argues that our political and legal systems, much of our music, literature and art, is deeply imbued with Christian beliefs. Just amplify that point to our viewers Kevin? That's a very good point, and uh, people don't really understand or know that J.R. Tolkien, who obviously did uh, Lord of the Rings, and that was uh, a a global success, the movie, he talks about that uh, trilogy as being underpinned by Christian ethics, Christian beliefs, virtues. Similarly, The Lion, The Witch in the Wardrobe, I mean, if you look at that children's story, again, good and evil, concepts about uh, courage, about faith, about uh, doing what is best for others. They're all Christian, yes. inherently yes. Christian values yeah. and ethics. Uh, yeah, I mean, things and, like, uh, things like, like liberty that. and freedom and social justice. 